So moving on to chapter six, design mode, we're going to look at chapter or lesson 32. So in 32, we're going to start looking at how we can use design mode to, to plan our lighting rig. There's two main reasons that you'd want to use design mode. Uh, if you've paid for the extra subscription level now, you can have access to, to this, uh, this tab. You won't see it if you're only on report mode. So if you pay for a high level subscription, or if you haven't paid for a high level subscription, this is about as far as you can go with the lessons, I'm afraid. Um, so the two reasons that you'd want to use design mode are, you'd either want to check what your lights are doing relative to your set as you're designing. So you can check for beam angles, you can check to see what lenses you need. So you can just see how the beams are distributed on this stage. The second reason is if you're trying to do concept images for a client. So if you're only ever gonna create one static look, you're not trying to visualize with a lighting desk, you don't need a lighting desk, you don't need the higher level of subscription. You can stop at design mode and just create very beautiful images. It's the same engine, it creates the same quality of look, uh, but you're using the inbuilt control tools. So we're gonna go into that, explain how all the control interfaces work and how you can use it to create uh, beautiful images. So chapter six, we're into design mode now, uh, lesson 32. We're moving into looking at um, the fixture attribute controllers. So we're gonna jump across straight into design mode. I remember what I said before about you, know, you can choose to go directly into the view you want to see. So we're going to go into shader view. Um, we will need to drop out of this pretty quickly, actually, because we can't really see what we need in here. But we have uh, the shader view that we're familiar to, uh, familiar with in CAD. If you're interested to know what this is on the right, why you get this moiring effect, you may have it in your own models. This is something that uh, you can't see until you're in the shaded mode, but it is a uh, another piece of scenery that is in exactly the same place as another piece so in this case i, I had the the three original flattages that were you know, imported with the cab plan and i've created some new ones to demonstrate to you how to make them and because i use the same set of lines they're in exactly the same place and this effect is called moiring and it's where the graphics engine is just trying to figure out what's what needs to be rendered what gets priority it tries to do both at the same time it's pretty ugly what you've got to do is either move one piece out of the way of the other or just delete something so Later on, when I can bother, I'll just go through and delete the red ones out because they're clearly wrong. So this is our design view. Um, so we're going to have a look a bit later on at the view options so we can see how to make this look pretty. But for now, I just need to do a couple of things because we can't see any of our lights. If I um, if I take a light, so I need to select a light first. So this is, this is one of the problems with design mode. I can't select anything. So I'm going to have to jump across to my wireframe or quad view. So go to quad, so I can see all my lights. Uh, I'm actually going to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to take this and drag it over, and I'm going to drag this over too. So I've got more shaded view, and I have the same option down here at the bottom with the plus sign, where I can uh, I can see. Uh, make, I'll make my own panel so I can have a, a large view at the bottom of this and just a CAD view at the top, so I can select fixtures. Uh, and that's quite small. I might want to make it up here, actually. I'll make that my plan view so I can easily see what I'm doing. Make that my, my section view instead. There we go. So I'm going to go and select a light. Let's select something simple like a source for pole. And now when I come to this view, I don't see anything until I turn it on. Now in CAD mode, when I select a light, something will turn on straight away. In here, we have to choose one of these uh, control systems this is basically a lighting desk up here these are all the attributes that you would normally have in the lighting desk so i'm going to toggle my intensity design at all and it opens up a new window Ooh. so as i wheel this up we should see a light going on and off and if you're not just check in here you can see this wireframe mode you see this big circle that is my light going on and off the reason we can't see in here is because actually it's very very dark and this one, in lesson, um, where would we be, 34, we're going to look at view options in a lot more detail. But for now, let's just demonstrate. I'm going to right click into the shader view, go to view options. I'm going to turn my ambient light down. And I'm going to turn, oh, it's I'm going to turn my beam exposure up just so we can see the light and see what it's doing. There we go. Nice and clear. Uh, we're going to come into this in detail later. The only other thing I just want to do is just change my background color from blue back to black. Just make it feel a bit more theatrical. As explained before, the reason I do this, you see, we, we can't now see the booms because the fixtures are black and they're on the black background. If you make it blue again, it's really easy to see what's going on. So that's why I like the blue or maybe a dark grey if you want to still be able to see things, but want to keep that theatrical look. Um, 
Oh, let's go with black just to help me demonstrate a point a bit later on. So there we go. That's our first fixture turned on. And one thing you'll notice is that when you dim it down, you get that nice warming effect of the lamp that you get in real life. It's a tungsten lamp. So it tries to simulate that quite nicely. Um, we're going to turn that off. Let's let's try and do uh, a fixture that can move. And we're going to go through all of these in in time. So let's pick uh, TW1 down here. I'm going to turn that on. Oh, that's nice and bright. And you see it's an 80 volt lamp. It's quite peaky. As soon as you get it on, it's very low and it's already quite bright. It tries to simulate real life. You can override these um, these beam options if you right click properties. And in beam options here, we can override all these settings. So even though we've, we've used the global view options, and I said we're going to go over this in a later lesson, but we can drive this up higher so that it's even brighter if we wanted to. But that's pretty hideous in this case. But just in case you need to, to, to do that, that's where that is. Um, so let's try to move this light now. So we've got intensity. What else have we got? Let's move along. Toggle focus design at all. Gives us pan and tilt wheels. So let's try tilting it. Let's tilt it onto stage. And let's pan it. And if you're wondering what this splodge is down here, I'm going to explain in a bit. Oh, is it, oh, actually, I'll explain it less informative view options. So we're going to position that there. And now what I could actually do is select all of my Mac TW ones and do that together. So let's let's just home him. And I'm going to do control select all of my TW ones down that side. We're going to turn them all on together. Oh, that's hideous. Let's tilt them on stage. Now it's looking pretty awful at the moment, and I'm going to explain why in lesson 34. Also doesn't help that I've uh, got some colour left in there from a previous previous session. So we're now going to look at uh, what we've got zoom design at all. I'm ignoring iris because the TW1 doesn't have an iris. I can drag this up and down to make it zoom in and out. These are all undockable, so I can drag it out as a, as, a, as a feature. If you're using this for the first time, it might just be creating a long line of them. Um, what you do is you grab it from the orange bit, and you can see it's offering you places to dock it with these little little grabber icons here. If you bring it over to one of these, you can see you can place it inside one of the windows you've already created, which keeps it nice and neat. So I'm going to dock it next to that one. I can put a couple more in the middle there as well. Um, now, something I did earlier is I created some fixture groups. I explained fixture groups in an earlier lesson. So I can select my V1000s, it just highlights them. So there you go, see they've gone green. I can select my TW1s. I did this by right clicking and going select fixtures by type. And I can just select you know, all my TW1s in one go. And I'll turn them all on, there's the others. Um, so yeah, we could do that. Now if I wanted to just select a couple of lights, I could grab, say, just ones on this side, like I did earlier. And then go right click, new fixture group, TW1 stage right and then when I select those I can then work those separately there we go so what else have we got we've got color let's have a look at color so color I've docked that and it's just above my pan and tilt so if I select all of my TW1s oh no that one uh, I can select it just using this color wheel and there it changes color so it makes it sort of nicer color there. Uh, I can change it from being RGB to CMY mode if you want to see the data. It doesn't change what you're doing up here but it just has some small effect. Um, let's jump over to the VR1000s actually because I want to show you some of the other things that come with um, uh, a moving light that has uh, more attributes, more parameters. So I'm just going to home that. And you can see actually some of the things I've left in from my previous lessons. Uh, I can pan tilt these. There should be three, and of course we're seeing duplicates of beams here. That's because there's no um, shadows turned on, so it's going straight through the straight through the floor and hitting another surface. And I'll explain all that a bit later. Now we can make this narrow and wide. Now, the reason I like V1000 to demonstrate this is that people that know and love V1000 like I do um, will know it has a super zoom feature, and it's really important to explain that. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows this differently, but it goes to 60 degrees and normal zoom and then has a 10 degree boost up to 70 degrees and that extra 10 degrees just kills all the optical treatment so things like a gobo you see there's a gobo in there that would not work in the zoom mode but it does accurately represent the the zoom range of the light so you can 
Uh, you can work out your beam angles, but don't rely on it for doing all your hard edges and things. It's not going to do that very well. And that actually goes to most lights, but it's especially true of V1000s. Um, so let's try and look at some other tools. We've got the Iris top tool is actually grayed out because this is a TS model. doesn't have an Iris in it. Uh, but if we had an Iris in this light, that would work. Let's just get rid of it because I don't need it. Um, we have a GoPro tool. And we have only, only got one GoPro wheel in a VL1000, but we can just click through that like this. And we can rotate it if we want to index it. Uh, and what else have we got? We've got a prism tool. Now, a VL1000 doesn't have a prism, but that would be down here. It works exactly the same way as a GoPro. You just click through it and you can rotate it. Uh, and all the other things here I'm going to leave. The only thing that's really interesting to know is the moving scenery tool if you had moving scenery which we're going to do right at the end of this series it's uh, two of the last lessons i'm going to do i'm going to show you how we can do moving scenery but this is where you get access to that uh, movement control and i'll test it in here and we're going to cover all this later but just in case you don't get there and you're just curious how you can move scenery in this mode you can do it in here you can select an axis that you've already created and you can move it in the x or the y or in the in the rotation mode so that is the sort of basics of the fixture attributes. Uh, in the next scene, I'm going to look at um, how we can save some looks. It's a very short lesson. And then we're going to look at the most important part of WYSIWYG, in my opinion, is, is how we can control the view options. And it will tidy all of this up and make it look a bit more realistic uh, and give you a better experience. So let's finish here and I'll see you in the next lesson.